Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to take a formal introduction to gateways in NSX. So let's get to it. So what is a gateway in NSX lingo? The best way I could describe it is it's just a virtual router. And there are two types of those gateways in NSX. The first type is what we call a tier zero gateway, which we can see here. The next is a T1 gateway. So just remember, these are virtual routers. This is just called a T1, this is a T0, and we will talk about what the differences are and why you would pick one over the other. Now moving forward, I will say that both of these gateways will allow you to connect segments directly to them. And I wanna be very clear, whenever we're talking about gateways, whenever you hear that terminology, T1, T0, gateways, think overlay. We can never connect a VLAN back segment to a gateway. That is because the VLAN back segment is relying on regular VLAN configuration on the physical network. It still has its default gateway on the network, a router on the network. So just remember that whenever you hear gateway, whenever I talk about connecting segments to a gateway, it will always be an overlay segment. So let's go ahead and draw out a segment. So in this case, I'll just call it SEG, S-E-G, and we'll just connect it to our T1 gateway. And by the way, we will do all of this configuration live in the GUI as well, but in this case, we connected our overlay segment to our T1 gateway. Now, I do wanna mention that a T1 does connect to the T0, so I just drew that out right here. So the T1, I connected it over to the T0, but the T1 can only connect to a single T0 at any given time. Now we will talk about redundancy and that kind of thing. The short answer is there's no single point of failure here because the T0 is ultimately works as active standby. And again, we will go into more detail on that later. But the point is we have a segment, it is connected to a T1 gateway, and that T1 can only be connected to a single T0 at any given time. Now let's go ahead and draw out our VM and we'll connect that up just to make this picture complete. So we have a VM, it's connected to our overlay segment, and we do that in vCenter. So we go into vCenter, we edit the VM settings, we select this segment or this port group, and that is how we connect into this network right here. Now, let's say that we eliminated the T1. We don't want to use it anymore. We, in fact, maybe we don't even create it at all. In this case, we can also connect our segment directly to the T0. That is perfectly valid. That's okay. Now again, later in the course, we will discuss the design decisions on why you would do this versus why you would do this. But in a nutshell, just be aware, you can connect a segment to either a T1 or a T0. That is perfectly fine, but it can only be connected to one at any given time. So this segment cannot be connected to two T0s or two T1s or a T1 and a T0. It can only be connected to either a T0 or a T1. All right, let's shift gears a bit and let's talk about a little more detail into the routing piece of this. Now, a T0, what is the difference between a T1 and a T0? A T0 is where routing is set up between NSXT and the physical network, and this would typically be either BGP or OSPF for our routing protocol, but you can also use static routing as well. Now, let's draw this out. So, this is basically the diagram we just had a minute ago. So we have our VM here. It's connected to our overlay segment. This is called web-seg, that's the name of it. And we connect that to a T1. And just like we did before, we connect the T1 to a T0. Now let's draw out our physical router. So we have this physical router now, and let's just say it's a Cisco router. Well, I just said that the T0 is where routing is set up between NSXT and that physical network. So what we'll do at this point is now configure BGP or OSPF between the T0 and that physical router. The net result here is that from a routing standpoint, this VM will send its traffic through this web segment to the T1, from the T1 it will go to the T0, and from the T0 it will be routed to the physical router on the actual physical network. So everything from here down, all of this is all virtualized. This is the only physical thing in the environment in this case. Now I mentioned that we would talk about redundancy and we will, but just to summarize it, 
the T0 can be active standby or active active. Now, what that really means is that you will only ever really think of the T0 in terms of, hey, I have a T0. But there will be either under the hood, there will either be an active active T0 or an active standby. And there are design implications on that that we will discuss. But just be aware, those are kind of your two options when you create the T0. Now, as far as the T1, one of the most common use cases is to use it as a tenant router. So let's say we have another tenant and we want to let them manage their environment, or maybe we, we just want to manage the T0, but we want to give them their own router and their own segments. So we could have them create their T1 or we create it either way. And now they can create multiple segments and connect it to their T1, but ultimately it has to route out through our T0 that we own. That is a very common setup in terms of multi-tenancy. Which by the way, one of the advantages to this setup we could technically have overlapping subnets. What I mean is the subnet that we use for this segment right here can be the same as this one. And that is because we can do network address translation on these T1s right here. So that is just kind of one of the things I just want to get the wheels turning in your head as far as why you would do, you know, T1s or T0 or why wouldn't you just connect your web seg directly to the T0, things like that. All right, so let's move on forward. The T1 is always active standby. There's never a scenario where it will be active active. It is just active standby. And that is primarily because we are running stateful services here. Those could be things like load balancing or network address translation. That's probably the biggest one. Because of those, we will always have these be active standby. Now, like I've mentioned a few times, we don't have to have a T1. We can connect directly to the T0. That's perfectly fine as well. Now, I do want to mention, as you can see from this drawing, the T0 can connect to multiple T1s. That's perfectly fine. Probably worth mentioning, you're not going to ever connect a T0 to another T0. So just keep that in mind. There's no checkbox to say, okay, let's connect this T0 to my other T0. Nothing like that. It will be T1 to T0. That's it. The last thing I want to mention here is that whether we are talking about a T0 or a T1, they both support stateful services, and that would be things like gateway firewall. Gateway firewall is just essentially a north-south firewall. So as traffic comes in and out of this environment to and from this VM, we can firewall at either the T1 or the T0. And by the way, that's in addition to a built-in firewall on the virtual interface of the VM itself. That would be called the distributed firewall. And again, we will go into the security much more in depth later, but I just want you to be aware that we do have stateful services that can run here or here. All right, that's all I had for you in this lesson. I just wanted to introduce you to some of these concepts. You will see these build out as I keep saying. As we go forward, you'll see them kind of repeated in almost a circular fashion. And of course, we will be implementing these. So you'll see all of the checkboxes for things like active standby or active active as we deploy all of this. So that said, I'm excited. In the next lesson, we are going to talk about our lab and take a look at ultimately what we will be building going forward. So that said, I'll see you there.